50 for equivalent fractions. Rationals are um, often a bit harder because rationals completely follow fraction rules. And whenever I say the word fractions, people freak out. So rationals follow fraction rules, but they're not hard to do. So the first um, outcome we went over was NPVs, non-permissible values. Can we state them, right? It was an outcome in the curriculum. The next one is, can we come up with equivalent rational expressions? Then we have simplifying, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, and solving. There's eight lessons in this unit, okay? So it's a longer unit. Um, but you guys can do well in it. So remembering that rationals follow fraction rules, you still have to think, hey, what would I do if this was a fraction? So we're going to look at the first one. Write a rational expression that is equivalent to 8 over 12. So this is like when your teacher was in elementary school, and so were you with them. I don't know why I said your teacher. When you were in elementary school, and your teacher colored in a piece of the pie, and it was like, oh, I get to eat one out of four pieces. And then your teacher was like, boom, what if I take those and I split them in half? And your teacher did say that. They're like, boom, yeah, that was funny. You guys aren't laughing. Now how many pieces do they get to eat? Two out of eight. They are equivalent. You still get the same amount of piece, piece of the pizza. Pieces of the pizza? Amount of pizza. <laughs> But you might just feel like you get more because you now have two pieces instead of one, right? But you get the same amount. They're equivalent fractions. And we're going to do the same with equivalent rationals. Now, I could, what did I do here? I multiplied the top and the bottom by two, did I not? And it got me to two over eight, correct? But if I wanted to go from two over eight to one quarter, I would divide the top and the bottom by two, could I not? So the catch for equivalence is you have to do the same operation to the top and the bottom, and those operations are either multiplication or division. But you have to do the same to the top and the bottom. So if I look at 8 over 12, what could I do to the top and the bottom to get myself something else that's equivalent? Divide by 4? Sure. So you get 2 out of 3, which is equivalent, right? Okay, 8 out of 12. What else could I do? Anyone else put your hand up? I'll pick you. Oh, come on. Put a hand up. Pick something to do to it. What do you want to do? Yeah. Multiply by what? Don't pick something crazy. Nope. Any other options? Multiply by what? <laughs> 2. Sure. Multiply by 2. So we get... 16 over 24, right? So we have to, whatever we do to the top, we have to do the bottom by multiplication or division, not by squaring or addition or subtraction or any other craziness. It's either multiplication or division, okay? And we did that in younger years, and 8 over 12 was equivalent to 2 over 3 is equivalent to 16 over 24. They're all equivalent, bless you, which means equal, okay? So now we have rationals, though. So we have 4x squared plus 8x over 4x. Remember, simplifying, you're going to simplify the top, you're going to simplify the bottom, and you're going to cancel off stuff that's um, the same. But equivalence, that's not what you're going to do. You're going to do the same to the top and to the bottom. Okay? So what could I do to the top and to the bottom in this case? Divide by 4? Sure. Sorry? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can divide by 4 the top and the bottom. We could divide by 4x the top and the bottom, right? No. So you're going to be left with 4x squared divided by 4x, which is x, 8x divided by 4x, which is plus 2, and then on the bottom you'd be left with a 1. Now, if you're dividing by 1, do you have to write dividing by 1? If the 1 is in the denominator, do you need to write the 1? No. If the 1 is in the numerator, do you need to write the 1? Yes. Because if you say the answer was a quarter and you took the 1 away, your answer would be 4. Are those the same? No. But is 4 over 1 the same as 4? Yes. So the 1's in the denominator, you can drop it off. But if the 1's in the numerator, you have to keep it. Okay? Now, I could also, instead of division, I could multiply the top and the bottom by x. And I could get 4x cubed 
plus 8x squared over 4x squared. And I would be right. It's equivalent. Okay? So, on the diploma, how could they ask a question like that? So, Because if not, it's, it's fair game. You could put anything, right? You can multiply by 100. You can multiply by a half. You could, whatever you want. So what they would do often is they'll say this. Determine if these are equivalent. So you'd have to see, can I make one be the other? Can I make the other be the other, right? And to be equivalent, they have to be exactly the same in all ways. But before we get to those questions, we need to state NPVs of this one. So what's in the denominator of B? Right. Because we have a 4 in brackets and an X in brackets because they're multiplied. The 4 doesn't give me an NPV, and the X cannot equal 0. Okay? So they could do it this way, where they ask you if they're equivalent, and you'd say yes or no. Or they could give you um, another way, which I'll show you after. Okay. So you look at example 4 A and B. Tell me if they're equivalent or not. Try it out. Okay. The first one. What would be the easiest to compare? in the first one, the tops, to, like the numerator to the numerator, the denominator to the denominator. Numerator to numerator, because the numerator only has one term, correct? So I'm going to try and make this one be this one. Could you try and make um, the second one be the first one? Is the other one better to do? No, it's up to you. I like multiplying, so I'm going to go this way. So I need the 9 to be a negative 18. So what am I going to have to multiply by? I see way too many phones out. And I know you're not doing your math on them. So. Bless you. Multiply by negative 2. And what you do to the bottom, you have to do the top when it says equivalent. What you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. This might be the first time I've taken away phones in about three or four years. They may become mine. OK. 18-year-old phones. It's going to be great. I've never had to do it before, but I will. 9 times negative 2 is what? Negative 18. Negative 2 times 3x is? Negative 2 times negative 1. Now, you have to check. Does every term match in every way? What does that mean? Do the numbers match and the signs? So we have negative 18, negative 18. Positive 2, positive 2, negative 6, negative 6, do they match? Does it matter that the bottom two are in this direction? No, the signs in front is what matters. So these are actually equivalent. Let's look at B. Which are the easiest to compare in B? The denominators. I'm going to do the first one to the second one just to prove by division because I did the first one by multiplication. So I need the 4x to be 2x. So what am I going to divide by? 2. Could I multiply the other one by 2? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So we're going to divide by 2, but we have 2 to the top and to the bottom. So 2 divided by 2 is what? <clears throat> is 1. Two, negative 2x divided by 2 is negative x. And then 4x divided by 2 is 2x. So this is the catch. They either have to completely match all the same numbers, all the same signs, or they have to completely not match. Same numbers, all wrong signs. Why would that still work? Because instead of taking out a 2, you could have just taken out a negative 2, and then all the signs would change and you'd be fixed, right? They'd all match. So always try and match your signs up. Um, so this one has... A 2x in the denominator, 2x in the denominator, negative x, positive x, positive 1, negative 1. Darn it. No, they're not equivalent. We're going to look at example 5 for a second here. We're almost done the whole lesson because we did part of it yesterday. In each case, write a rational expression with the given variable and non-permissible values. So our variable for this one is x, and our non-permissible value is 3. So we know our non-permissible value is x cannot equal 3. 
So what would it have been in the denominator? X, X minus 3. Because you just bring the 3 back over here. Because what did we do? We just solved for it when it was equal to 0, correct? So what could you do? Unsolve it. Get it back equal to 0. Subtract the 3. Right? So in our denominator, at the very least, we know we have an x minus 3. In the top, we can put whatever we want. 6, 4, x plus 2. It doesn't really matter what's in the top, um, unless you try and make it a different variable or something crazy. Don't go crazy with it. Just like 2x plus 1, or just 2x, or at very least 6. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, just don't try and make it crazy. Like, don't put a square root in it or an absolute value or something wonky like that, because it's not irrational. Okay, this one we have the variable is a, non-permissible values of 0 and 4. So we have a cannot equal 0, and we have a cannot equal 4. When we work those ones back, this one already is in 0 form, right? What do we have to do to this one? To get it back to equal, not equal to minus 4. So at the very least in our denominator, what do we have? A and A minus 4. And we can put them in separate brackets. In the top, what could we have? 6. We could have A. We could have A plus 4. We could have 2A minus 7, right? That's not essential. OK, you need to hand me that because you're driving me crazy. And you haven't all year, so we got to take that away. Variable is P. We have a non-permissible value of a third, so this one's harder. P cannot equal one-third. Don't just subtract one-third, OK? You need to do it in pieces. So how did we get to one-third? We divided by three. We moved the one over, added the one, and we divided by three, correct? So how are we going to move it back? Multiply by 3 first, yeah. And then subtract 1. So we have 3p minus 1 in the denominator. And what do we put in the top? D, we have the variable m and the non-permissible value of negative 8. So m cannot equal negative 8. So what would it be to move it back? Plus 8. So in your denominator, you have m plus 8. In the numerator, we could have m squared plus 4. m. Minus 1? Like, we could just keep going, make it pretty, you know? So, you have homework in your textbook. That's not the textbook. You have yours? Thank you. We're going to be using our textbook the entire time, this unit. I guess I can write it on the previous page. Assignment page 
you have a lot of time to work on this. If you started working on it right now, you'd be done it by the end of class. So I don't want to see phones. I don't want to see chit chat. I want to see working. The textbook is a, there's an attachment in the classroom for the whole textbook. Yeah.